to prosecute the matter before us. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have tremendous respect for this great institution. Having served here for five years between 2017 and 2022, and I appear here in a very nostalgic moment that I'm back in the house where I stayed for five years. Despite the fact that I've come under difficult circumstances. Mr. Speaker, maybe the sound people, is that okay now? Mr. Speaker, sir, and the honourable members, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. I hope, Your Excellency, you have been advised by your lawyers that uh, you are here to respond to specific issues yes. in the motion. I have my advice. And not to talk generally. I know. Yeah, so rules of relevance will still apply to you as they apply to all members. Mr. Speaker, the motion before this great house alleges that two years ago, since assuming office, I have acquired property and wealth whose estimate value of 5.2 billion shillings, a significant number of properties to which this sum of 5.2 billion is erroneously and maliciously attached belongs to my late brother, the late Honorable James Drito Gachagua, and as demonstrated by his will, a copy of which is attached. The fact as follows. Olive Garden, my response. The allegations that I own the Olive Garden Hotel is false. The truth is that Olive, Ho Olive Garden Hotel used to belong to my deceased brother, the late Honorable James Dirito Kachagua, and therefore has never been my property. This is information that most of you may be aware as it is in public domain. Upon his demise, my late brother left a will in which, in his recognition that I can take care of his family, he appointed me as one of the executors of his estate. In the said will, my late brother directed that the hotel should be sold, among other properties and proceeds distributed as per the will. I'm also listed as a beneficiary together with other persons named therein. In accordance with these instructions, the hotel was sold by the ex executors to a third party. Owing to the above, I do not own the hotel and have never owned it contrary to acquisition in the motion. For the benefit of this August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the following supporting documents. My little brother's will, sale agreement dated 17th May 2023, an official search for Olive Garden Hotel Limited. Mr. Speaker, Bipingo Beach Resort, just as in Olive Garden, above this allegation is also false. Bipingo Beach Resort belongs to the estate of the late James Dirito Kachagua. For the benefit of this house and the general public, I have attached a next to this response copy of the official search of Bipingo Beach Resort Limited, confirming that the hotel is still in the name of my little brother's estate. Queen's Gate Service Apartment. The allegation is also false, and the property belonged to my late brother. Queen's Gate Service Apartments, registered in the name of Ipingo Beach Resort Limited, was sold to Cooperative Bank of Kenya Limited. Staff retirement benefits scheme as evidenced by the agreement for the dated 4th May 2022 and a transfer dated 5th October 2022 marks Annex RG6. Lad Paso Ruguru Kiamariga 2023 in Madeira East constituency, which have originally constructed a helicopter loading facility. My response is, I do confirm that I own the above reference property, which has approximately 2.5 acres in size, and which I have planted nephew grass for my dairy cows. I purchased the land in the year 2023 for 3.5 million from farm proceeds coming from my dairy farm. I have read through the motion and there is no iota of evidence adduced of the impropriety in the way I acquired this small property. 
Finally, on this matter, I wish to confirm that there is no helicopter landing facility for this particular parcel on the motion. This part is also false. I attach a copy of the agreement for purchase of this property marked an extra RG7. 40 acres of land purchased in Kakuret within Cabraine in Nyeri County. My response. I confirm that I own a property having bought it in 2015, a time when I was not a state officer. I had not been even been elected as member of parliament from the Honorable Jeroga Wainaina, member of parliament for Kenny, who is present in his house. Or oh, I'm not sure whether he's present. Therefore, this property I purchased 10 years ago, and not two years ago, during my tenure as deputy president, and as indicated in the motion, the allegation is false. I have read through the motion, and there is no iota of evidence adduced of any impropriety in the way I acquired this property. For the benefit of this August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copy of the agreement for sale and purchase of this property marked as Annexia RG8. Eight acres of land in Meru County. For the record, I wish to confirm that I do not own eight acres of land in Meru. This allegation is false. However, in the spirit of full disclosure, I would like to confirm that I have purchased 29 acres of land in Meru, the land of my mother, which I bought on around 9 February 2024 through a loan granted to me by Solution Circle Limited, which I am a member. This said circle has a charge registered against the title, which it continues to hold as security until I fully repay the loan. For the benefit of the August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the agreement of sale marked RG9 and a letter dated 15 July 2024 from Solution Circle Limited confirming that they finance the purchase of the property marked Annex RG10. Dairy farm in Nyandarwa County. My response is I do not have a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, therefore this allegation is false. The land in Nyandarwa has no single animal. Companies. The motion alleges there are 22 companies owned by my family members and which have been used to massively load the money and conceal proceeds of crime, corruption and benefit from influence peddling. My response is the mover of the motion has listed that 22 companies associated with me and has alleged that they have been used to massively load the money and conceal proceeds of crime, corruption and benefit from influence peddling. I've carefully gone through the motion and I've not seen any evidence to support or prove the allegations therein. It is not clear to me how to respond without having seen any evidence incriminating the companies. I'd like to be clear that these companies have not been involved in any illegal activities, and I believe that is why the move of the motion has not tabled any evidence of impropriety with respect to the companies. It does appear to me that the move of the motion was so meticulous to get all the companies associated with me and my family. And I believe that he, he also had evidence of illegalities committed by the companies. He would have shared or tabled that for the record. However, it is not possible to get evidence of illegality where there is none. Having said the above, allow me just to mention a few companies because there are many. Regarding the Gashagua Foundation, this is a foundation I incorporated in 2022, and I clarify that the foundation is a non-profit making entity with the sole objective of uplifting the lives of less privileged in society. This foundation therefore does not trade, and honorable members, you are aware that by law, a foundation cannot be used to trade. Since incorporation, the foundation has received a total of 12 million shillings, which has been utilized as per the schedule marked Annex RG 11 which is paying school fees for children in Pwani University and other universities across the country. Dokas Regadi Foundation, because she is not here to defend herself, this is a foundation founded by my wife, by my wife, Pastor Dokas, incorporated immediately we came into office as a non-profit making entity for the sole purpose of rehabilitation of drug addicts, widows, single mothers and orphans. A brief write-up of this foundation together with its achievements is annexed 
here with as Annex Chair RG12. It is in public domain that Pastor Dockers have been around the country doing work of rehabilitating drug addicts and helping others who have challenges. There are many other companies that are here, but I don't, uh, because it's, this is a house of record, I don't, ha I don't want to bother the members of parliament of going through all of them. I want to probably only talk about Wamunyoro Investments Limited, named after my village in Wamunyoro. This company was incorporated 21 years ago before I became deputy president, and it's a company that holds family property. Mr. Speaker, sir, I've been accused of exerting influence on officials in the Ministry of Lands to issue an allotment letter to Amunyoro Investments Limited and using the fraudulently acquired documents in support of a court case. My response, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, I wish to confirm that Wamunyoro Investments Limited has never been issued with any letter of allotment for land in Embakasi. Wamunyoro Investments Limited purchased this land from a third party in the year 2012. The company's ownership of this property has been confirmed through two legal processes. One, a case was filed before the National Land Commission in the year 2016, adjudicated and a determination was made that this property belongs to Amunyoro Investments Limited. That was long before I became the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Again, a matter was filed in High Court case, ELC case number E242 of 2022, which was filed before I became Deputy President. All the documents filed in support of this case were filed in court before I became Deputy President, and no documents have been filed by myself in court upon becoming Deputy President. This being the case, it is not true that I have used my office as Deputy President to manufacture documents filed in this matter. The High Court found that this land legally belongs to Amunyoro Investment Limited and issued the appropriate direction. This matter has since been challenged in the Court of Appeal. I invite any honorable member who may want to be enjoyed in this case to have the liberty to do so. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have been accused in the irregular procurement of mosquito nets at a cost of 3.7 billion. In response to paragraph 45 of ground 7 at page 23 and 42, paragraph 78 and ground 11 at page 36, 37 or 42 of the impeachment motion, I wish to respond as follows. It is not true as claimed in paragraph 3 of the witness affidavit of Andrew Molua that I was involved in the KEMSA 3.7 billion irregular procurement of malaria nets, either directly or through proxy. Further, Shobika Impacts Limited was not awarded the subject tender as the acting director of procurement, Dr. Justice Kinoti, by letter 5th May 2023, formally notified Shobika Impex Limited that its bid was unsuccessful because its tender security was not paginated and the tender was hence non-responsive. That is clear at paragraph 4 of the witness affidavit of Adru Morwa. He contradicts himself by claiming that on 11th July 2023, I pressured him to surrender the original bid board, yet by the letter dated 5th May 2023, KEMSA had requested for collection of the original bid. Thus, there was no cause to pressure to be exerted on Mr. Mulwa for or any other purpose. I am aware of a foreign company known as Shobika Impex Private Limited, domicile in India, and which appointed Kenya, Crystal Kenya Limited as its local agent in the year 2014, that is eight years before Regadi Gashagwa became the deputy president. To date, Crystal Kenya Limited has complied with the agency terms between itself and Shobika Impex Private Limited, annexed here to and marked as annex RG18 in an appointment agency letter by Shobika Impex Limited in the year 2014. Sometime in 2023, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority advertised tender number GF ATM Mall NFM 2022-2023, 
for supply of long-lasting insecticidal nets using the international open tendering method of procurement on behalf of the Global Fund. The monies for supply of the nets, as per my understanding, was a pure grant from the Global Fund. I am aware that Shobika Impex Limited still participates in doing business with and has not been demurred by the Global Fund to date. I believe being technically qualified to provide and deliver the goods subject of the tender document, having the financial ability to do so, and without their participation or assistance from Crystal Kenya Limited, Shobika Impex Private Limited independently participated and submitted in its bid in response to the subject tender pass one to an invitation by KEMSA. Having not participated in the subject tender, Crystal Kenya Limited did not submit any of the documents in response to the subject tender. Specifically, Crystal Kenya Limited did not submit a bid board or tender security in its name in response to the subject tender. It is therefore not true that Crystal Kenya submitted a fake bid board with an intention to fraudulently acquire public property. It is also not true that with my sons I use Crystal Kenya to massively louder money conceal proceeds of crime, engage in corruption, and benefit from influence peddling. Subsequently, via the letter, 5th May 2023, KEMSA notified Shobika Impex Limited that it was not successful because the tender security was not originated and requested Shobika Impex Private Limited to collect its bid security from the procurement office immediately. Annexed here too, and marked annex RG19, is a said letter by KEMSA dated 5th May 2023. However, EACC commenced investigations of the subject tender and on conclusion of the investigation by EACC and the Senate on the subject tender, KEMSA CEO Terry Ramadani, who had been suspended on this issue, was appointed Kenya's Deputy High Commissioner in New Delhi, India by President William Ruto. Thereafter, Crystal Kenya Limited, Ashobika Impex Limited, Agent in Kenya followed up in the release of Shobika Impex Private Limited's bid board tender security on behalf of Shobika. Annexed here to an annex and marked annexure RG20 is an email from Shobika Impex Private Limited email addressed to Crystal Kenya Limited together with a letter of even date confirming that Crystal Kenya Limited had authority to collect their bid board. KEMSA was mandated to immediately release the bid board tender security upon determining that Shobika Impex Private Limited was unsuccessful in the subject tender, and that is why they requested that the same be collected from its procurement office. KEMSA did so, as can be seen in its letter, dated 11 July 2023, and next year to unmarked annexure RG21 in the same letter by KEMSA, dated 11 July 2023. Mr. Speaker, noting that Shabika Private, Impex Private Limited was not successful, it did not supply any goods, and it did not receive any public funds in payment thereof with respect to the subject tender. Accordingly, I have not committed any crime under Section 45, 1, 46, 47, A3, and 48, 1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economics Crimes Act, and Section 2, 3, 4, and 5, the proceeds of Crime Money Laundering Act, further, I have not breached Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, for I did not bully any state or public officer with respect to the subject tender, and specifically, no evidence has been tendered to support the allegation at paragraph 78C of Ground 11 at page 37 of 42 of the motion, which alleges that I summoned procurement officers in ministries and institutions instructing them to direct procurement of goods and services in a specific manner. I have been accused of unnecessary and expensive renovation of the official residence of the Deputy President in Karen and Mombasa. Mr. Speaker, firstly, I would like to state that funds for the renovation of the official residents were approved and allocated by this Honorable House based on the fact that the premises had been neglected for a very long time when Dr. William Ruto was Deputy President. It cannot be fair 
that this House would proceed to impeach me because of an action that these honorable members have approved by of appropriating monies for their innovations. Mr. Speaker, the contract for the refurbishment of the official residence of the Deputy President, dated 22 December 2022, was signed by Honorable Katole Metito, the Controller of State House, Office of the President, and Agrobic Investment Limited that was awarded the tender because the controller of State House at that time was the accounting officer in charge of the Office of the Deputy President. The report of the Auditor General, Mrs. Nancy Gadongo, dated 24th January 2024, on the Executive Office of the President for the year ended 30th June 2023, gave the opinion confirming that due compliance with the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the report is annexed herewith and marks as Annex RG 23. I would also like to add that the Deputy President, as Deputy President, I am not involved in procurement processes of my office, whether directly or indirectly. I would also like to state that I do not know the company Agropreek Investments Limited, which undertook the renovations. I do not know the directors and the company. I did not participate in the tendering or supervising of the same. The motion dated 26 September 2024 alleges that on 29th January 2023, 45 million Kenya shillings was transferred to Bayani Enterprises Limited, which is alleged to be a special purpose vehicle used by me to save on public funds. No evidence whatsoever is contained in the motion showing that the said company is in any way connected to me or that I have any beneficial interest in the said company, which I am neither a director or a shareholder. I categorically categorically refute the allegation which is false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to confirm that I'm not a director or a shareholder directly or indirectly of the company called Agrobrick Investments Limited, and I do not know its shareholders or its directors. Mr. Speaker, there is an allegation of dubiously acquiring substantial portion of the sum of 100 billion paid to Lusona Events Limited. My response, Mr. Speaker, is just like in the above other matter, I have read the motion and I would like to state that there is no evidence that this company is linked to me. I wish to categorically state that I have no beneficial interest in the said company and neither have, have I affiliated, am I affiliated in any way to the directors and shareholders of the said company. I would also like to state that I'm not a director or a shareholder of the company and do not know its shareholders or its director. Seat in the tethering committee. I am not the accounting officer of the office of the deputy president. I have also not had any complaint against the manner in which the company undertook the work. I am unable to confirm the allegations on funds withdrawn from the account of the company since I am not a signatory to his account. I am not associated with the company in any way whatsoever. Mr. Speaker, the motion dated 26 September 2024 claims that I am reasonably suspected to be the principal beneficiary of the dubious transactions. However, Mr. Speaker, no evidence has been adduced or annexed to the motion to give credits to the allegations or suspicion. I categorically refute acquiring or benefiting from any funds paid to Lusona Events Limited, and therefore the allegation is false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of siphoning money through St. Nicholas Rehabilitation and Industrial Training Institute Limited. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that the motion dated 26 September 2024 makes the claim that a payment of 21 million was made to a company called St. Nicholas Rehabilitation Center and Psychiatric Hospital. Then subsequent payment was made to Umalari Motors Limited. The motion claims that it is suspected that the entire transaction is used by me to save on public funds and the payments typify money laundering transaction. I'm not a director or a shareholder of this company, and I've never received any payments from this company. Similarly, I'm not affiliated or related to the shareholders and directors of the two companies. No evidence has been annexed to the motion showing that I was a beneficiary of the funds paid as alleged. I wish to point out that I'm not the accounting officer in the office of the deputy president, and I'm not aware that the payments made to this company by the office. The allegation is therefore false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, there is an accusation of alleged sensational but false, but false accusations against 
the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor. My response, Mr. Speaker, it is alleging the special notice motion of ground, on ground four on page 14 and a gross violation of the Constitution that I publicly attacked the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor and forcefully threatened to bring action against her. First, Article 160, sub Article 5 of the Constitution provides that the judge cannot be found liable in a court of law for actions taken in good faith in lawful performance of their work. This provision is not a bat on freedom of expression guaranteed at Article 33 of the Constitution, nor a bar of the right to seek redress for legal wrongs simply because a wrong is committed by a judge. The exit multiple legal fora in which to take action against a judge for any actions that are not lawful. My statements were protected speech consequent to a decision by the learned judge in a matter involving my personal assets, which I disagreed with and found to be wholly unfair. The matter having been concluded at that stage, my criticism of the decision was not subjudice, nor in any manner prohibited by law. While I respected the ruling of the learned judge, I was in absolute disagreement with it. Contrary to the assertions in the special motion, I did not falsely threaten to bring action against the learned judge. I took actual legal action available to every citizen of Kenya under Article 160B, subsection 2 of the Constitution, which allows any person to petition the Judicial Service Commission for removal of any judge and filed a legal complaint before the Judicial Service Commission, JSC, in March 2024. The complaint being live before JSC, discussion of the conduct of the learned judge in the said manner here would be sub -judice. A copy of the complaint is annexed here with and marked annexed RG 24. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of diverting materials meant for construction of Kilifi Malidi Highway to Tamaka Private Road to Vipingo Beach Resort. My response, Mr. Speaker, I reiterate that Vipingo Beach Resort is registered in the name of the estate of my late brother, Horrible James Gashagua. Number two, the facts are as follows. King Charles III visited Kenya between 30th October 2023 and 30th November 2024. During his state visit, one of the designated places where King Charles III was to visit was Kuruitu Marine Conservancy, which shares a road with the Bipingo Beach Resort. I have annexed a copy of the program for the state visit to Kenya by King Charles III, marked as Annex RG25, which at page 13 on item 63 and 64, shows his departure and arrival at Kuruitu Marine Conservancy. There are several media reports confirming the visit by King Charles III to Kuruitu Marine Conservancy. I have annexed extracts of the media reports by the Star newspaper dated 7 November and by African News marked as an extra RG26. My understanding is that the road to Kuruitu Marine Conservancy was upgraded in respect of this visit, which also to benefit the local community, including amenities like Cheriani Secondary School, Cheriani Primary School, a mosque and a public market as part of the corporate social responsibility. I wish to point out that the alleged road, that is Takaungu Cheriani Vipingo, is a public road and not a private road leading to any property associated with the deputy president, but a public road. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of undermining the president and the cabinet by allegedly making contradictory public statements from the position taken by cabinet regarding the evacuation of the people residing along the Nairobi River. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that Article 147 of the Constitution provides that the deputy president shall be the principal assistant of the president and shall deputize the president in execution of the president's function. Article 20, 28, which states that every person has inherent dignity and the right to have the dignity respected and protected. Article 29C, Mr. Speaker, states that every person has the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be subjected to any form of violence from either public or private sources. Section 15G1 of the Land Act states that notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in this act or in any other written law, all eviction shall be carried out in a strict accordance with the following procedure. B, 
be preceded by proper identification of this taking part in the eviction or demolition. B, be preceded by the presentation of formal authorizations for action. C, where groups of people are involved, government officials or their representatives be present during an eviction. D, be carried out in a manner that respects the dignity, right to life and security of those affected. E, include special measures to ensure effective protection to groups of people who are vulnerable, such as women, children, the elderly, and persons with disabilities, including special messages, measures to ensure that there is no arbitrary deprivation of property or possessions as a result of the eviction. This includes mechanisms to protect property and possessions left behind involuntarily from destruction, to respect the principles of necessity and proportionality during the use of force and give the affected persons the first priority to demolish and savage their property. Critically, our constitution provides at, at 147.2 that first the deputy president shall perform the functions conferred by this constitution and any other functions assigned by the president. First one to Article 3 of the Constitution, I, as well as every other citizen of Kenya and state or public officers, have an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend this Constitution in performing any of my functions. This, the national values and principles of governance contained in Article 10 of the Constitution, by those state organs, public officers, and all persons, including myself as Deputy President, wherever we make an, or implement public policy decision. In addition to this matter, Mr. Speaker, these national values and procedures include the rule of law, democracy and participation of the people, human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced eviction that will be contrary to our constitution and international law. While campaigning with, pres with President William Ruto, and subsequently when I was sworn in as Deputy President, the President and I promised as a key pillar of the Kenya Kwanzaa government that there will be no forced or unlawful evictions and that all evictions will be human and entail legal compensation. Mr. Speaker, the Office of the Deputy President has undertaken extensive engagement with all parties in regard to cabinet decisions on eviction, which I fully support, including the Nairobi River, which is an entity under the Office of the Deputy President and the County Government of Nairobi. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced evictions that will be contrary to our Constitution and international law. Guideline number six of the United Nations General Assembly guidelines of the implementation of the rights to adequate housing prohibits forced evictions and that the state should ensure that any eviction under domestic law are fully compliant with international law. The guidelines further require meaningful engagement with communities to ensure that the right of residents are implemented cooperatively without the need for eviction procedures or police enforcement. Additional government directives on the eviction, save for the fact that on being informed that the persons residing along Nairobi River would be evicted and paid 10,000 shillings only, which I and many other Kenyans felt was inadequate compensation for eviction. I insisted that the government should abide by the constitutional dictates and international norms while implementing any cabinet decisions, including eviction, and maintain the dignity of the citizens of Kenyans facing eviction. My statements did not and cannot be construed to undermine the president by insisting that people should not be evicted inhumanly and without adequate compensation. Mr. Speaker, I've been accused of undermining devolution by allegedly holding a meeting in Nairobi Wakulima Market. The motion alleges that on 28 September 2024, I unlawfully interfered with the running of the Nairobi City County Government by holding a public rally where I allegedly incited citizens against lawful directives of the County Government on planning and location of markets. My response, Mr. Speaker, 
is that the motion alleges that on 20 September 2024, I unlawfully interfered with the running of the Nairobi City County government by allegedly inciting citizens against law of directive. Article 6.2 of the Constitution provides that the government at national and county levels are distinct and interdependent and shall conduct their mutual decisions on the basis of consultation and cooperation. This being the case, it cannot be said that there is a violation of the Constitution when someone from the national government makes a comment on matters relating to county government. The traders had sought me out to intervene and request the governor on their behalf to dialogue with them and seek a solution to the grievances with regard to the relocation of markets. I request that a video, an RG video three, be played for the benefit of members to say what I said. 